Hi guys! Um, I'm Liv. Um, I don't know whether you've seen on the Cocktails and Canvases post that I've now joined the team. Um, I'm going to be teaching you today how to um, do some colour mixing and about colour theory. Um, so I've got my big board here. If you want to paint along with me, um, then get a sketchbook or something to paint on. Um, I've got my colours ready to go, so you're going to need some colours as well and some paints. If you don't want to uh, paint along and you want to do this in your own time, then you can do that as well. Um, and I will save the video, it will be up on YouTube as well. So you can um, watch in your own time as well. Just see how many people get locked on. I don't want to say too much and then people come a bit later. But yeah, if you are painting along, then make sure you've got some paints with you and a lot of water, different water pots. I've got four water pots here with me because I like to have clean water all the time because otherwise we get brown. And then paint wise, it's just the primary colours, blue, yellow and red and black and white. A sketchbook would be ideal if you've got a sketchbook um, I'm doing it big so that you can see but my example piece um, before um, doing this was in a sketchbook. Colour theory is always good to be um, kind of preliminary work before you do a painting, something that would usually go in a sketchbook um, for you to practice your techniques and then you're able to um, do your sketchbook and your painting being said here <laughs> um, so um, yes so I want to just see if there's anybody else joining before I get started on my colour mixing um, I've got a range of paintbrushes here a kind of a medium sort of size now I'm lucky because I have endless amounts of paintbrushes but one or two paintbrushes for this is good the cleaner the brush and the cleaner the water the better your results will be um, so just keep that in mind um, when, when you're painting and doing this Okay, so I don't know how much you guys know about colour or how much you guys know about uh, the formal elements of art, but the formal elements are the key ingredients, if you will, um, for any kind of painting. So the formal elements of what underpin everything there is in terms of when you come to do your painting, what you will need. So it's like when you bake a cake, you always know you're going to need flour and eggs. The formal elements of art are your flour and eggs. Um, so colour is one of the formal elements and hopefully um, with more of these lives that we do uh, because we're, we're trying to with cocktails and canvases give you the skills that you'll need um, so that when you come to do the events you've got that background knowledge that's going to be really really helpful for you when you come to do your paintings. For example last night um, when we did um, the painting live on Zoom um, that was really good because what was great about it is that everybody in the group that was joining us had a different sense of colour in their piece so although we were all told to use the same colours people tend to mix their colours differently and colour is a really really important um, element of a painting because it gives it mood atmosphere and depending on what type of person you are vibrant more soft tones you can kind of um, paint in your own way and learning about colour will really help you with that um, so I'm going to get started, I'm just going to see what can, people are saying, people are joining which is great. Um, so yes, we're going to start here. I've already laid mine out, I'm trying to stay on camera at the same time. Um, I've already laid my um, board out here and I don't know whether you can see my outlines that I've done but maybe in your sketchbook before starting this or if, if you are joining with us you, you can do the boxes afterwards, we can just do the swatches beforehand. I've labelled primary colours here and I've got four boxes um, going down and three along and that's going to be for tint, shade and tone. So I'm going to do in, in this column tints, in this column shades and in this column tones. And then over here I've got my secondary colours. So there's three secondary colours so I've done three boxes and the tertiary colours. There's six of the tertiary colours but I'm going to do them um, half in each of the boxes. So it's three boxes that I'm going to cut in half. Complementary colours, again, three boxes. I'm going to cut those in half as well. And then colour mixing. So this section down here, 
that is just for you to have a play with at the end. Um, so you can do as many boxes as you want of that, or you don't need any boxes, you can just have a go at swatching. So it's kind of up to you how you lay out your page. You could just do your swatches and then your boxes. I'll show you on my, um, my sketchbook, I'll bring it a bit closer. I actually did the swatches on here and then went around the outside um, with a pen afterwards, and I did all my titles afterwards as well. It's just nice to have a nice layout as well. Okay. So we're going to start with um, our primary colours. So I might be talking to people here who know everything about colour and everything there is to know. So you're like, I know what the primary colours are. But then there could be some people watching this who haven't thought about colour theory since they were in primary school. So I'm just trying to make it so that everybody understands. Um, so the primary colours are red, yellow and blue. They are special because they are mixed together to make other colours but nothing can be mixed together to make these. So they are standalone colours that nothing can be done to mix them. They are mixed together to make colours. So I'm just going to wet my brush to start with. And this is just so that the um, paint moves well when I'm making a swatch. Just get some of the paint onto the brush of the uh, red and go straight into one of your boxes. It doesn't matter which one, whether you want to do it as your tint, your shade or your tone but as long as you stick to the rules when we get to that point. So I'm going to go in my tint box and I'm just going to do a swatch. So it doesn't matter too much how you do this, just keep it thin, not too thick. The nice thing is, is it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to do it neat around the edge. That's why I've called it a swatch. I always like going into um, places like B&Q and looking at all the swatch palettes of colour that you can get. I used to collect those when I was a kid. I was absolutely obsessed with colour when I was a child. Still am. Um, so I'm going to keep, the reason why I've got so much water is because I'm going to keep these kind of colours in each water pot so that I'm not making brown. Because basically the three primary colours mixed together ends up making brown. So you want to keep it as clean as possible. So I'm going to go for a new brush. If you don't have as many brushes as I do, then just wash your brush out thoroughly. Maybe get some kitchen roll and um, you can do that. I'm going to go with my yellow in the next one. Similar sort of swatch size. I'm going to pop that in that one. I'm going to do the same again with my blue and that one. The blue, for some reason, my blue anyway, it's thinner than um, my red and my yellow. So I'm just going to double it up. Better with layers if you are doing layers of swatches to wait till the first layer is dry and then go over it once it's dry. Okay, so I've got my three primary colours there. Now, I am going to need uh, to repeat that same thing again down here at the complementary colours because the complementary colours are a primary and a secondary colour, which we're going to talk about later, um, but it's what, what they, com they complement one another and they sit across from each other on the colour wheel. So just for now, just so you've got it there and you're not uh, having to go back, because once you've mixed the colour, it's going to be hard to get back to the primary blue so come back to um, the bottom here depending on where you've put your complementary colour box I'm going to pop a swatch of the blue here this time I'm going to go along because I want to put my complementary colour at the bottom so I'm just going to make a little swatch of that I'm going to do the same with the yellow and the red same with red it's really satisfying this, even if you know everything there is to know. I, I really enjoy doing the example. There's nothing quite like getting back to basics when you're so used to the get, getting technical with your painting. Once you've gone so far with painting, you forget to come back to where it all began. And where it all begins is with things like this and the theory of it all and the colour. So, um, yeah, so I've got my complementary colours um, that are going to be down here. So I've just started with the primary and I've got my three primary colours up here. Now, I'm going to talk about the tint, shade and tone next. Um, and we're going to fill those swatches next before we go on to secondary. Because again, once we've mixed, it's going to be hard to get back to our um, 
primary colours. So with tint, tint is when you add white. So you can add a tint to any colour that you have. You can add a tint to a secondary colour once we've mixed secondary colour. But a tint is when you add white to a colour. So we're going to um, use the red again. We're going to take a bit of red away from our palette somewhere separate so that um, you're not mixing red within, uh, sorry, if you're not mixing white into the big blob of red, you, you're taking it away. I always do that. The bigger the mixing palette you've got, the better because you don't run out of space. And I've seen so many people before when we're painting that kind of try their best to get a, a colour mixed in a really, really small area and they end up making a, a, bad, a bad decision. So using your um, paintbrush, I'm just going to go to one side of my white and just take a little bit out and add it to my red. Now the idea is, as I get further down my uh, swap patches here, um, I'm going to add more white as I go along. So I'm wanting it to get the colour to get lighter as I get further down um, on the swatches. So this time I've just had a small amount of white and we're starting to get that beautiful, this is one of my favourite colours, like a beautiful pink. Just a tiny bit whiter than the one before, add a bit more. If th this heat means that um, paint has become um, quite gloopy, it dries out before you're ready. So if your paint is getting a bit that way, then add a little bit of water um, and then you can start to bring it back to life. So I'm just going to add a bit more white and now I've got lighter one. You can go as far with this as you want. On my sketchbook um, I've done six swatches going down. You could go as far as you want. You can just keep adding white, adding white, adding white and seeing how far you can go. So for the last box that I've got here I'm going to add quite a bit of white to see how light I can get this pink to a nice baby pink. I love mixing colours. It's so sad but I do love it. Nothing better. Okay, so there we go. So we've got our tint going down there from red down to a lighter white. This is always fun when you're decorating your house and you get to do that where you go and get the samples and, and paint your wall and deciding on which shade you want. And I, I couldn't believe I painted my house grey and I couldn't believe how many different greys there were and how to choose which grey I wanted. So with this, it's quite nice to make your own different shades. So now we're going shade. So talking of grey, shade and tone are different. So shade is where we're going to be adding our black. Tone is when we add grey. So this is, I've got yellow next on mine. If you want to, you could have had yellow and add white to your yellow to do your tint. And you, so you can mix it up. It doesn't have to be that you do it in my order. So I've got my yellow. I'm going to take my yellow to one side again. And I'm going to add a small amount of black to start with. So this time, rather than getting obviously lighter as I go further down my swatches, I'm going to get darker. So I'm going to add a small amount of black to start with. Like a bumblebee. It goes a bit, <laughs> bit green. I'm going to add a bit more yellow. It's gone a bit too dark too soon. So if that happens, add more yellow. So yeah, this makes a, a really nice olive green. And then I'm going to add a bit more black, keep getting darker. It's therapeutic mixing colours, I think. Ooh, dirty. It's a dirty yellow. I like it though. And then um, I'm going to go darker again. And do my final one. Before I carry on, can people hear me okay? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. And I've just seen a message there to say if people have joined a bit later and didn't see my introduction, I'm Liv and uh, I've just joined on board with cocktail and canvases and doing some lives and next week um, I'm going to be doing uh, the pina colada, we're going to be painting the pineapple on Friday night so come and join me and uh, we're going to have some fun and obviously bring your pina colada as well, that's a must. Um, so I've gone to shade, so I've done my adding white to get my tint, 
adding dark to get my shade and now I need to add grey to my blue to uh, get my um, tint next. So this is to tint. So again, I'm keeping this water the same, so I've now got a, a red water, a yellow water and a blue water going so that I'm not making brown. So I've got my blue, I'm going to take that to one side again, I'm going to add a touch of black and a touch of white. So that makes your grey. And again, what I want to do here is I want to make it darker as I get further down or greyer as I get further down. So at the start, you might add more white than you do black to make your grey a lighter grey. This is getting heavy in my hands. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put that there. I love that one. So pretty. It's actually similar to the colour of the sky here at the moment today. I don't think the weather knows what it's doing today, does it? It's either cloudy, too sunny, can't make its mind up. So I'm going to add a bit more black this time because I want to get darker as I get further down. But it's still grey because it has white in it. This creates more of a pastel effect to your uh, paint as well because obviously with the white um, it's creating that tint as well. Um, so the tone of your um, paint is um, a little bit more um, pastel -y. So I'm going to add a bit more black again and a bit more white, but I want it to be predominantly black because I want it to be that darker grey. In fact, literally the tiniest bit of white. Okay, so we should be there now with the primary colours and our tint shade and our tones. Um, so I hope you've learned a bit about that through that bit. If you knew it already, that's fine. But you, it's always nice just to have a, a colour theory sketchbook page that kind of you can always go back to as well. And sometimes um, with sketchbooks that I have, I think every sketchbook that I own has a page about colour theory, even if I have been, I've been doing sketchbooks for years and years and years. But I always have one page that any time I'm doing a painting, I just have it open and I can just go back to it and, and back to the way I'm thinking, especially when it comes to complementary colours, which we'll talk about later. Okay, so the next thing is um, secondary colours. Now, again, I might be talking to people here who know everything there is to know about um, colour, but I am always surprised um, that people still, or young people don't know, um, what, how you mix colours together and what those colours make it, but it, it just kind of seems obvious to me that these two colours would make this and when you ask some people they think it's completely different to what it is and I always find that really interesting so if you don't know you might learn something and if you do know or you thought you knew you might be wrong or you might be right um, so secondary colours they're primary colours two primary colours mixed together so any two primary colours always make a secondary Again, like I said before, all three primary colours mixed together will make brown. And also, if you, um, if you, you, sorry, you can't mix anything together to make the primary. So it's always the primaries mixed together. So I'm going to go into my red water here because I've got my red brush. I need to get rid of that white that we did. So I'm going to use fresh water just to give it one more rinse off before I go, because otherwise it's going to make a lighter version. It's gonna, it is actually going to make a tint of a secondary colour, which you can do later when you do your own. So I'm going to take my red away. It's half and half for a secondary colour, so the ratio of each colour is half and half. Um, it's different for tertiary, which is next. So half and half, half red, half um, yellow. This is the start. So yellow and red together makes orange. Now sometimes I find um, people don't think it's made orange because it's quite dark when it's half and half and think oh, I need to add more yellow. You're going to end up making a tertiary colour if you do that. So just keep keep with it, keep half and half as much as you can. Um, wash it down a bit so it's because of the heat it keeps drying and then fill your swatch box here wherever you put it for your first one. I'm also going to ask while you have got this orange on your brush, you're also going to put it next to the complementary primary colour that it goes with. 
Now the complementary to orange is blue. So orange and blue work really, really well together. So you, you'll see it now, if you didn't know that, that things that you see around or, or on adverts or on TV or on film, often those colours are paired together. Uh, or a nice outfit, uh, orange shoes with a navy blue dress, gorgeous. So yeah, pop that underneath um, because it's mixed now, so you may as well do it while it's mixed and not have to do it again. So it's just nice to see them next to each other and you can see how they complement one another. And while we're here as well, because we've got this orange already mixed, our brush is clean, we, well, our brush has got the orange on, we may as well carry on into our tertiary colours here. So tertiary colour is the orange and then the primary colour that goes with it. So orange is made with red and yellow. So to make another uh, two tertiary colours, one is called red orange so that's where you add more red to the orange so i'm going to put more red to one side i'm going to take some of my orange and add it to my red because if i added the red to my orange then it's going to be hard to get my tertiary yellow my yellow orange so this is red orange so taking some of the orange and adding more red to it is going to make our tertiary what we call red orange It's like a blood orange colour. I'm going to do the same again, take some of my orange away. This is why we need a big palette because we're going all over the place now. Um, and this time add some of the yellow to it and then lo and behold we have a yellow orange. This is a nice colour. So this is a tertiary colour. yellow orange and just pop that underneath so you can see your two tertiary colours. Now on the colour wheel which I can show you and um, we can do in another live uh, maybe another time but how it sits on the colour wheel which is a circle is that the primary colours sit in a triangle and then the secondary colours sit in the middle of them and then the tertiaries go either side of the secondary so you can see that the nearest primary um, gets mixed with that secondary to make the tertiary but we can we'll go through that we'll do that another time okay so I'm, I'm leaving that brush now into the red water because I don't want to um, cross contaminate as they say um, and I'm gonna go for green next and um, so it's good actually to use the uh, brush that you had in your yellow water because it's already with the shade because we added black it already makes that green so even if there was a bit left on your brush it wouldn't be too bad but don't get it mixed up so take some of your blue away from the big pile of blue and then take some of your yellow and add it so it's half and half and um, for a secondary again this might not be what your first thought was when you thought what green looked like because this is half and half but this is a true secondary green so pop that on the swatch next to it next to the red uh, next to the orange sorry and again we want to add this to our complementary as well so the complementary to um, red which you'll probably know this one more than the others because of Christmas um, is green so I'm going to pop that underneath So yeah, green and uh, orange always look good together because of Christmas. That's what I always think of anyway. Um, and then we need to do now our tertiary green. So you're probably getting quite used to this now if you're watching this later and, and going along with it. So I'm going to add some uh, blue. So take your green away again. Give it a separate pile of its own. Add some blue to it. So this is now our tertiary blue-green and it's gorgeous it reminds me of oh just if that had white with it and you can try that with your mixing later this would make a gorgeous um ocean color i'm going to just add a bit of water because it's um starting to get hot well it's absolutely boiling today isn't it and yesterday Whew. last night when we were doing our canvases uh, on zoom it was getting very warm and the, the paint was uh, starting to get a bit plumpy but we were good we all worked out in the end and um, so that is our tertiary blue, blue green
green or green blue, whichever. And then take your green again, and this time you're going to add more of the other primary that you made to make the green more yellow. So this is now yellow green. It sounds really complicated, but it's not. It's not. I'm, it sounds like I'm just shouting colours at you constantly. Okay, underneath. This one's nice. Imagine that on your front door. That's a nice one. Okay, and then um, finally, the final secondary colour that we've not made yet is purple. So I'm going to use my blue brush for this. Again, it's got a bit of the black left on it from when we did tone from the grey, sorry. So I'm just going to rinse that off a bit more. And I'm going to take, a, this is probably the worst one for that idea of this is not what I would think as purple because um, it looks quite dark when you mix it together. But go with it. Go with it. Okay, and then pop it on. To do um, the boxes that I've done, the swatches, you can use a ruler if you want. I drew, actually drew around a small Tupperware, funnily enough. But you can draw around what you want, or it actually is really nice just to um, do rough boxes, sorry, rough boxes that um, haven't been done with a ruler. It's got that nice kind of authentic feel to it. I, I like doing that when I'm doing my sketchbooks. Um, okay, so we've got purple. Don't forget, we need to put it next to our complementary. Now this one I can never forget, as a chocolate lover, purple and yellow are complementary colours and you'll see it on uh, twirls. That's why the twirl packaging is yellow and purple, because it wants you to look at it and go, eat me, I, I've got complementary colours on my packaging. Um, and you'll see it now, you'll be in the supermarket and you'll pick something out and you never never knew the reason why they'd chosen those colours to use and it's because they complement each other. Okay, um, so taking some of that purple to one side, adding some blue, so now we've got blue purple. This will probably be not more what you imagined when you thought of purple. And then you're going to do the same, take some to one side. I'm really branching out on this uh, palette now. Add more red, and now we've got purple red. This is like a, a maroon colour. It's gorgeous. I'd like a lipstick in that colour. Yeah, it's like an autumn, perfect autumn colour for your lipstick, isn't it? Right. So you've done the basics now. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it a bit closer for you to see, and then this is where the fun begins after this. Not that we've not had fun, but more fun. And you might want to go a bit more crazy. Whoa! <laughs> Just falling all over the place. Okay, so you should have now, depending on how you're doing it, all your swatches there, your primary colours, your tertiary colours your secondary colours and your complementary colours at the bottom. Now we have space at the bottom and, and you can create more space if you want. I'm going to make sure this goes back. This is where I have a lot of fun. And this is where you can start to make your own colours and start to add them into this mixing section down here. You could also, if you wanted to go absolutely crazy, you could start to use space that's around the outside edge of your um, swatches to make these colours. But, how are you going to do this? You've already got this crazy palette of paints already, and you already know how to make um, your tints, tones and shades. So you can do that now with your tertiary colours. So you can go into your tertiary colours, using a similar a brush that works well with it, and add maybe a tint to it or a tone to it. So I'm going to add white to this tertiary purple red and make this gorgeous. This is the bit that I love because you just don't know what's going to happen or what kind of 
how much white you add will change that, how much, if you are adding black to it, if you want to add grey to it, it will change over and over again. So think about what colours you want to try, make little swatches of those, now that would make a great nail varnish. You think when you start to mix colours, you just think actually somebody should really employ me to make nail varnishes and, and lipsticks, I'm that good with colour. <laughs> That's how you feel. You trick yourself into thinking maybe you could have a new career path. So there's a, the yellow green over here. What should I add to that? I might add a bit of black to that, see what happens. Starting to look like Shrek or a frog. Use that into your next one. So you don't have to do what I'm doing. You can totally just have fun with your colour mixing. And this is where the fun is at, because you just think, I can't believe that that makes that. I'm going to go into the red um, yellow, sorry, the orange yellow, and I'm going to add white to it. Now this will make a really nice light orange, and I'm going to just push the boat out here, and I'm going to go a bit more crazy, and I'm going to take a little bit of this pink that I made earlier when I was doing the tints and I'm going to add some of that to it and what should happen with that, I'm hoping anyway, should make a nice coral. So this is where we're getting all testy, testing those colours, see what we can get. That's gorgeous, mm, lovely, right, pop that on, oh that is so nice. makes me want to go shopping for some shoes that colour. Okay, now I'm going to actually pick up another brush and use this water that I've not used because these, these waters are going to start going a bit brown in the end. So yeah, keep going. Keep seeing what you can get. That's a nice one. Now I've nearly run out of boxes now, but I could see what happens. Now sometimes you can end up going too far and then you'll, the worst case scenario, you'll just get brown. So that's the worst case scenario. And that's not a bad case scenario. You could, you, you might need brown in uh, some work that you're doing. But also, when I'm doing this, sometimes I um, get a really nice colour that I really liked making, and then I think oh, that would look really nice on my painting. Or so I've done it in my sketchbook, and I'm how did I make that colour? I can't remember how I made it, and I'm trying for ages to get that back. So when I'm preparing for a painting and I'm, I'm doing a sketchbook page on colour theory and I've got this idea of what sort of tones that I want in my painting, I will make a note of what I've mixed together to make that certain colour so that I remember it. So yeah, that's something that you'll want to do if, if, you, if you've mixed a really nice colour that you're really happy with, then come back write a note about it and make sure that you, you've remembered um, what you're doing so that is color theory for today we're going to we're definitely going to do a bit more on color because there's so much to it and and so many interesting things and what's going to be really nice now is on friday i'll show you the painting that we're completing on friday it's the pina colada we're going to make our pineapples so what I've taught you today is going to be really essential and, and important, but I will talk you through that again um, when, when we do this. But to get um, the kind of effect that we want on these paintings and to get the kinds of tones and colours that I'm looking for in them, um, you're going to need to know a little bit more about colour theory. So I thought it'd just be a really good idea just before starting the Zoom on this is to um, have a go with colour theory because there's, there's a lot of colour and a lot of mixing going to be happening next week. So on Friday, if you are joining us, make sure you've got a big colour palette, um, sorry, a big paint palette so that you've got a lot of, uh, of space to mix on. You're going to need it. Um, and also make sure you've got as, as many brushes as you can and water because honestly, if there's any tip that I could give anybody about when it comes to... Um, painting it's that it's clean water nice brushes and a big palette so that you've got enough room to mix there's nothing worse than being too crammed up and not being able to paint um, so i hope you've enjoyed the live this is my first ever live although i'm very used to videoing myself at the moment because i'm teaching online because i'm a secondary school art teacher as well 
so it feels like second nature seeing myself on screen at the moment. Um, if anybody's got any questions, then feel free to um, private message the, the Facebook page and I can get back to you. If anybody wants to know any more about how to lay their sketchbook out or if they are doing a page like this and wants to take a photograph and send it us, we'd love to see that actually, that would be really nice. So if you have had a go, take us a photograph so we can see what you come up with. Because I want to see these mi your own mixes, I want to see what you come up with because there's just something about colour that just excites me. So yeah, send, me, send us some photographs once you're done. Have a great Saturday and I'll see you all on Friday hopefully. Come and join us. See you later. <laughs>